He's throwing the ball to, to Des Bryant, uh, 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 Jason Witten, who, who actually uh, set a Cowboys receiving uh, uh, club record for receiving yards by a by a by a player who broke Michael Irvin's record in that category right, yesterday. Right. So good for him. Congratulations to Jason Witten. Um, but you know he he's got as many weapons or even better than Eli does. And the advantage that, that Prescott has is, is that the, the Cowboys' offensive line is, is regarded as the best in the league. Right. The Giants' offensive line is, is regarded as probably one of the one of the seven or eight worst in the league. Not, well, you can't play like that every week. I, mean, no. I, I assume this is a one of those weeks where they let it go by, and next week they come back and be normal because there's a lot expected from this team this year. Oh, of course, and, and, and this and isn't the Jets where it's going to be zero and seventeen. Well, know? the the reason the reason that that I'm not killing the Giants is, is for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's one game. Right. All right. Number two. Like I said, the Cowboys are, as far as I'm concerned, the NFC, the team to beat. So, yeah, you would have liked to have been uh, have it be more representative game and have it be a more competitive game, but it's week one. Right. So let's not go crazy. Plus, you're missing your best player yeah, well. with Beckham being out. So let's see. Let's see what happens. And in, in, you know, when a Beckham gets gets back, and let's see what happens the next time they play the Giants. We're going to take the, a break right now. You're listening to from the press box right here at ninety point three FM WHPC. I'm Rob Leonard. He's Tim Leonard. Tim, you're on Twitter at? At Real Tim Leonard. Programming on 90.3 WHPC is brought to you by the Center for Workforce Development and Lifelong Learning at Nassau Community College, who offers a program that will prepare you to become a dental assistant. Consider a career in dental assisting as it is one of the fastest growing positions in healthcare. This course will provide training in preclinical dental assisting and includes lectures and labs in oral anatomy, dental equipment, and dental office administration. An optional clinical externship is also available. The program begins at October 10th with classes during evenings and Saturdays. For more information, please contact the Center for Workforce Development at 516-572-7487 or visit ncc.edu. It's almost time to heart walk. On Sunday, September 17th, Nassau Community College is going to be at Jones Beach, Field 5, for the 2017 American Heart Walk. Why are we walking? Well, we're not just walking, we're heart walking. Our participation is a way for Nassau Community College to make an impact on the deaths and disabilities from cardiovascular disease and stroke. Please join us. Nassau Community College can make healthier, longer lives possible for everyone. And that is why we're heart walking. A message from the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. It's now easier to listen to the voice of Nassau Community College on your phone. Stay connected to your favorite radio station anywhere you go on the iHeartRadio app. Never miss shows like the Nassau Morning Madhouse, It's Saucy, or the Radio Rumble Again. Streaming 24-7, 365. Listen to WHPC everywhere. iHeartRadio is radio and unlimited music all in one app. Listen live now in the iHeartRadio app and at iHeartRadio.com. Just search for 90.3 WHPC. We're back here on, on From the Press Box. I'm Rob Leonard. Joining me is award-winning sports writer Tim Leonard. Hey, Tim. How you doing? On the phone with us. We're going to talk some tennis. We don't normally talk tennis, but you know what? The U.S. Open happens in our town. Close enough. And I, Down the road. I, I've been there. I, I love going there, even though I haven't gone there you know, in a while. My, you know, our sister went this year without telling mm-hmm. us, of course. Mm. But then she told me why, and I understood why. You know, she was, there was a tell reason, me. You know, there's a reason why. We'll talk, I'll tell you later. Okay. So anyway, um, I, I like to talk tennis. I've always loved watching tennis. I don't know much about it anymore. No, I lo- breakfast at Wimbledon. That we, whole never, we never talk. I, I ask you to talk tennis on the show, and you don't want to. Well, you know. I'm, I'm putting that on you. I'm putting it on. Because I, like, I like to spread the sports around of on the show. Of course we do. And on the phone with us, he um, one-time sports writer at Newsday, and currently an independent observer of the tennis scene, it is Dan DeRosalia. Dan is going to talk uh, the U.S. Open with us. Dan, welcome to From the Press Box. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Rob. How are you? Hey, Dan. How are you? How are you doing? Great. Thank you. Um, so how was uh, the, the, this year's U.S. Open, how, in an overall general view? How, how did it go? So I love the U.S. Open. It's my favorite tournament every year, probably because it's in our backyard. Yeah. This year there was a little sting for me taking off the U.S. Open because of the amount of people 
headline people who didn't play in the U.S. Open, okay. both on the men's and women's side. Right. Serena Williams missed the tournament. She actually had a baby during the tournament. Well, that's well, a pretty good reason. Serena had a good reason not to good be reason. there. <laughs> Another former major uh, winner on the women's side, Victoria Azarenka, also didn't play. She's in a custody dispute involving her child, and due to reasons for you know having to do with those, she was unable to play. Um, and on the men's side, four or five of the top ten actually not only withdrew from the U.S. Open, but have announced they're going to take the rest of the year off. So we were left with Federer and Nadal, and then pretty much nothing on the men's side. <laughs> yeah, and, Andy it. Murray, right before the tournament started, uh, he, he wound up uh, injured, I guess, and, and had a pull out. Murray's been hurt for a while. Right. He um, flew into New York with the intention of playing, and then after the draw came out, announced that he was going to withdraw, which sort of messed with the authenticity of the draw a little bit because it left Federer and Nadal on the same side. The two highest seeds on the other side went out before the third round ended. Right. Which opened the door for Kevin Anderson to make the final, and he was no competition for Rafa yesterday. No, but it was, everyone was hoping for you know, the um, uh, Federer-Nadal semis. It was, it, was, it was like the wish that didn't happen. At, yeah. Uh, well, you know, they've never played at the U.S. Open. They've played everywhere else. And we were one match away from it, but Juan Martín del Potro rose up in the quarterfinal and beat Roger in four sets to prevent the dream semifinal from happening. Yeah, that was uh, that was sad that 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 happened that way. It's, uh, come, come back next year, people. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, what about uh, our new the w- new women's champion? Um, she she's a good story. Let's be honest. Uh, both of them are actually pretty good stories, uh, considering Serena is out and and who knows how long Serena stays out. I mean, she you know just became a mother and. She might want to stay out a little bit. It's not like she's playing for the money or anything like that. Um, so wh- wh- how do you r- rate these new two, uh, these new women on the scene, so to speak? Well, Sloane Stevens is, it was the champion. She's a terrific story. She, um, she was ranked in the 900s going into August. She had not won a WTA tour match the entire 2017 until August. Wow. She had missed the entire season with a, with a pretty significant injury. Just reappeared in August ended up making the semifinals of two straight tune-up events and then one here. So it's a pretty amazing story that she was able to win. Um, she didn't come from nowhere. She was ranked somewhere between 10 and 20, I think around 15, two years ago. She actually beat Serena Williams in the Australian Open in 2015 when she made a semifinal. Oh, okay. So she's not, <clears throat> she's not out of nowhere. She's a, she's a very good player. She's just been injured. Um, it was a good story because we had four Americans in the semifinals. And none of them named Serena, which is pretty amazing. That's yeah, true. That's, that's what made it more amazing with, with the four women in, in the semis. With it, Serena wasn't one of them. Exactly. Well, Serena wasn't one of them. Now, Coco Vandeweghe was one of them, and she's the niece of former New York Nick Kiki Vandeweghe. So there's a little New York touch there. She was also born in New York as well. Oh, cool. But there was a, a, a girl named Venus there who... Uh, <laughs> Who almost wanted? Who could have wanted? A girl, an old lady named Venus. Well, she's thirty-seven. <laughs> you know, it's hard to believe. You know, she's thirty-seven. She's still playing. I think of the last generation of players. They they all were retiring with 31, 32, and 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 she's still playing. And Serena is a little bit older now, but she keeps winning. So why would you quit? Why would you? Um, you know, she still has, I guess, the fire to do it, and that's mm-hmm. what it's all about. Um, so it was nice to see Venus playing because you know you hear so much now about Venus. I mean, about Serena. That to see Sir, uh, Venus Williams in the well, it was the semis. Yes, it was fantastic. It was a great thing to see. Yeah, at thirty-seven years old, Venus Williams won more Grand Slam singles matches than any woman on the WTA tour this year, which is pretty amazing. Wow! She made the final at the Australian Open, the final at Wimbledon, and the semifinal here. So she had a really, really great season at thirty-seven years old. Wow, that's uh, really good stuff. Man. At, an, at, an age, at an age where most players have retired and, and yeah. been long retired. Yeah, that's so, true. That's fantastic. Well, the, you know, the, the medicine is better now. The, you know, the, the treatment is better. And people like Roger Federer and Venus Williams, they just love tennis. I don't see him going anywhere anytime soon either. Well, how, how old's Federer? He's 37 also. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's Tommy good. Hosh just played. He just announced his retirement, but he played... Until he was thirty nine, forty. I mean, people are playing later now. That's a good point about the uh, the better taking care of themselves. And but I yeah. think of, I think of someone like McEnroe or or Bjorn Borg, who you know you know McEnroe took time off and came back and he was never the same. And I remember Bjorn Borg just basically saying good night. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, there were some rumors about what happened with Borg, but we don't need to get into. Yeah, that. that's, yeah, that's fine. let's not let's not do that. <laughs> um, uh, so, what else is going on with uh, U.S. tennis? Now, yeah, we get we get the four women in the finals. This is this is a very good thing. This is what helps bring people to watch tennis in the United States. I think. What what's is there like a, a new a new day, so to speak, for American women tennis? Uh, this is, I think, the, to, in my opinion, this is the best American women's tennis has ever been. And it, and it makes some sense because I do think the best female athletes realize that they can make the most money going into tennis, not the WNBA or professional golf. I think tennis is where it's at for the women. For the, for the, for the American men, it's a little bit trickier because they have so many other avenues to use their athleticism. I don't think we're getting the best athletes to play to play American men's tennis. Good point. Good point. Yeah, and they actually, I they, they, it was that was said after the women's final was that, that was kind of a talking point afterwards. Was that you know if if you're a female athlete and you want to make any kind of significant money, that tennis is the obvious avenue to go to because let's face it, nobody in the WNBA is is, is getting rich. Uh, soccer players, you'd have to get to the women's national team to make any kind of real money because it's not like uh, the the league for the women is is paying any kind of big money either. And and I, I'm I'm sure I'm sure you noticed Dan that the uh, the the gleeful grin that Sloane Stevens had when they handed her a check for three point seven million dollars. <laughs> yeah, she was pretty happy. Yeah, really happy. <laughs> Coco Coco Vandeweghe talked about it going into her semifinals. She she was a top-level high school basketball player who didn't really pick up tennis until her teens, and she actually made a conscious decision to go the tennis route over the basketball route because she thought it was more lucrative. Yeah, oh, for sure. They're, I mean, like, like I said, I've, I, I used to cover the WNBA, and, and I know what, what those players were making. First, first round, when Sue Bird was, was the number one pick in the WNBA, it, there was no negotiation. She signed a contract for $75,000. That's right. I mean, that's that's absurd. You're 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 being told that you're the best athlete, and and think about a, an NBA player who was who was a number one pick in the draft. It's you're talking millions of dollars. Sue Bird didn't even get six figures. And seventy five thousand dollars is right around the amount of money you would have made in the U.S. Open had you won one match and lost in the second round. Right. Exactly. Wow. So tennis tennis is the obvious place to go. Yeah, I, I think it is. It hasn't translated on the men's side, though. Sam Query had a nice breakthrough. He made the quarterfinals, had right. a disappointing loss to Anderson. He also made a semifinal in Wimbledon. But for the most part, American men's tennis hasn't made the strides that the women have. Well, that's true. And, and I've always thought that the women's tennis for a long time has been a little more popular than the men's. At least if well, not. You because know, if you have Americans to root for, it's going to be more popular. Yeah. In this you know, country. with with the, with the Federer, Nadal, Novak, Djokovic, Andy Murray, I think it's it's more well known. But I actually prefer the women's game. Well, it's a little, it's it's slightly slower, but it, it's more, arc- it's, more it's, it's more technical. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the men's game is is all is all about power. The women's game is more is more technical and there's more strategy involved. And, and every match matters. And in, in the men's in, in the men's draw for a long time, it's been a fait accompli that one of those four guys is going to win. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. The, the women is a crapshoot. It's any you know, every match matters. Anyone can beat anyone. You can w- lose the first round. You can win the tournament. Angelique Kerber, two years ago when she won Australia, she she had match point down in the first match in the opening round, and she ends up winning the tournament. <laughs> Everything's relevant. Everything matters. Whereas the men, it's just sort of like, all right, when are we getting to the semifinals with these guys? Right. Well, one thing I I wish at least for the 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 four majors with women's tennis is a three out of five, because that let's be honest, if you went up to make a sandwich, uh, you know, six zero happened really fast in the second set. And the, and the thing was over in about an hour and ten minutes. So I wish a third set would happen, at least in the majors. I know why. I'm not sure why they do it, actually. Um, but, you know, especially because they kept showing Billie Jean King in the stands. And, you know, she's fought for equal pay, which is, you know, the way to do it. But at least in the majors, you should play three out of five. So I, I actually go the other way on that. I, I wish the men played two out of three. Really? Yeah. Um, but you get, like, these great five-hour matches. Well, you do, but what are you giving up to get there? This this tournament we had no Djokovic, no Murray, no Vavrinka, no Rayonic. Uh, the list goes on and on of the guys on the men's side that are just completely worn out that decided not to play. And I think that the the, the grind of the travel and the three out of five matches is all relevant in that kind of stuff. 
Yeah. And there's, in the, in the interest it's, of self-preservation, I wish they would go back and play two out of three. Good point. Okay, I'll go with you on that. Yeah, there's an, accu- it's, it's, it's an accumulation. That. I mean, fans obviously love the five-hour matches and, and, and all the tension and drama. 